Hi there, and uh, welcome to our channel. So my name's Steve, this is Russ. Yo! And uh, this is our channel where we uh, basically talk about music, uh, music theory things, uh, gear things, uh, interview things, um, set the world right things. So uh, do that subscribe thing and then Flick the bell. Flick the bell. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. So uh, I go th first. This is uh, my first time in front of the camera. So hi, hi. Uh, and I absolutely love music theory. It's part of my job at uh, uni. I uh, lecture this and I absolutely love this. So um, I'm, well, basically in a lecture the other day, one of my students was uh, saying that he was a bit bored of a song and uh, he felt like he ran out of ideas so I thought it was actually a good idea to try and talk about some ideas to make it more interesting. So he was on about the song Valerie and I'm sure you all know that. Um, so this is E flat major 7 which goes to F minor 7. Uh, and it does this actually quite a lot, I suppose. Um, so I was just trying to say to uh, him to just try and make it more interesting. Like one, just try and think about what what you're playing, I suppose. So like E flat major seven doesn't have to be such like a, a, a bog standard voicing kind of thing. You can obviously like change the order of it to try and make it. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, make it descend a bit more, I suppose, like discord and I suppose in a different way you could like maybe or you can play with like oh like uh, uh yeah just try and make it the sound I suppose a bit more uh interesting kind of thing and obviously you can do like all sorts in like different different harmonies you can get like different tensions from it I suppose um and I suppose the more you learn of these I suppose it just makes a bit more fun well I find that I find it uh, makes it a bit more fun uh, so yeah top tip number one I suppose is just try and know what you're playing try and know the different extensions that you could play so you can chuck in like ninths in there uh, I suppose you could in a weird way chuck like sharp 11s in there if you want to make it um, more Lydian sounding I suppose you could chuck in like minor uh, sevens minor 11s it's quite a nice voice in. You could do like, I don't know, major nines, minor nines, uh, inversions, uh, crazy, stretchy uh, voicings to get them, I don't know, just make it a bit more interesting. Uh, so I'll show you what I mean. Here I have my trusty digital looper and I'm just gonna uh, loop some of these ideas, so. Uh, loop. So uh, let's add some textures to this. So major nine. So this is F minor seven inversion. Uh, let's play with the, the bass line kind of thing. So let's. Uh, this is just an E flat major. that kind of shows that you can just add more uh, to it and uh, just make it a bit more interesting. So yeah, top tip, just try and learn a bit more voicings around the guitar, try and know, oh, whatever your instrument is actually, to be fair, it's not just a, a guitar. Uh, speaking of guitar, this is my Teddy Crapster. Uh, it's a piece of rubbish, but I absolutely love it. Uh, uh, Russ actually helped me make this, well, fix it, should we say, he calls it Ron. 
because he thinks it's painted from Ron Sill. And, but anyway, uh, it's my crap, I love it, doesn't matter. Uh, right, Pfft, lost my train of thought as I always do. What were we on about? Uh, oh, right, upper structures, that's kind of a, a good one next. So, uh, if you are playing E flat major seven, the important thing to actually know is what makes the, oh crap, what actually makes this sound like an E flat major seventh? And the answer is something called guide tones. So in this, the guide tones, are your third and your major seventh. If I change any of those notes, so for example, if I change the seventh, this is a major seventh, if I change it to a dominant seventh, which is a minor seventh, it changes the sound of the chord. If I change like, I don't know, the third to, that's a great chord, but not a suitable one really for Valerie. Um, that was a minor major seventh. So I change the third to a minor third. It kind of changes, um, the sound. So the guide tones in this uh, are a G and a D. So this is a major third and a major seventh. Now those two notes are a G and a D. A G and a D. G and D. So you'd find these exact same guide tones in a G minor seven. So <coughs> uh, now I have a G, B flat, uh, G, sorry, being the good guide tone. G, B flat, D, there's the other good tone, good guide tone, and now the new note is the F. Now the F kind of, uh, sorry, that was a bit of a voice break, but anyway, uh, the F makes this E flat major into an E flat major nine. But I'm not actually playing an E flat major nine, I'm playing a G minor seven. You can do exactly the same for F minor seven. Um, where you can play A flat major seven to kind of make it sound like an F minor nine. So um, I'm, I'll put things on the screen like pew, 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 of like how this works, pew, maybe there as well, um, of how this works and showing how they share the same notes. So if I, um, I'll do this again. G minor, A flat. So G minor seven. So these two new chords are helping me flat out the sound, I suppose. I mean, you don't necessarily have to use them as chords. You could use them as solo ideas. So instead of uh, E flat, I could play G. A flat, and a G, uh, so it just kind of gives me a bit more uh, uh, solo opportunity as well now. So. Now you can do this exact same trick, but from below. So um, we're still looking for these two good guide tones for E flat major. So we're still looking for a G and we're still looking for a D. And you can find both of these in a C minor nine chord. So in a C minor nine, I have C, I have E flat, I have G, I have B flat, and I have a C. Uh, obviously, because that's the root. So I'm again looking for these good guide tones. So I have C, E flat, G, yes, uh, B flat, C, and if I put the D in there to make it a nine, the D is the major seventh. So I have this sound. Again, I'll do the pew pew of how it all works. Uh, so C minor nine shares exactly the same guide tones. That's why it kind of sounds a little bit similar. You can do exactly the same with a D flat major seven. A uh, D flat major nine, sorry. Uh, and again, pew pew. This is why it works, it uses the same guide tones. So in a D flat major seven, uh, we are looking for the A flat and the E flat. Uh, the A flat being the fifth and the E flat being the ninth. So, uh, yeah, so you can have again like, I mean, you can create more interest now. You can, you can start from like C minor nine to D 
flat major, uh, D flat major 9 to an E flat major 7 to F to G. Like, whoa! <laughs> over the same two chords of the battery. So uh, I'm only gonna give you one more tip and that's just try and think about the actual harmony that's happening. So in, in songs, you kind of like tension and release. So um, the one that you normally have is a five chord, a dominant seventh. In the key of E flat, which the song is in, uh, it's B flat seven. This is the five releasing to the one. And it's like, ah, bleh. Uh, and we like this tension because it um, obviously makes the E flat major sound incredible. Now you can also do it from a point of view of it not being in key, so you can force this tension. And this is called something called a secondary dominance. So this is knowing something and playing a chord, sorry, that creates a tension from a from a point of view that's not in key. So we're gonna create tension for this F minor seven. And the way we're going to do that is play the fifth of F minor seven, uh, which is a C seven. Uh, so hopefully you can hear. Now that has the release, like yes, and you can do exactly the same to the one. So it kind of creates that jazz, that one, six, two, five. That kind of idea. Um, so yeah, and the reason that works is because um, we have new guide tones in there, which basically resolve a semitone higher. So in the C7 chord, which is uh, root, third, fifth, and minor seventh, before going back to our uh, root of C, this is C, E, G, B flat, and then back to our C. But don't forget, we're going to an F minor, which is what we're treating as a one chord. So the E rises up to an F, and then the G, uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the, sorry, the G rises up to the A flat. So you get like this sound kind of thing. So you get tension, release, amazing, tension, and then release. Yes. Now you don't necessarily just have to think about it as a chordal idea to make it more interesting. I don't know if he's like playing a solo. You can kind of. Uh, check in these ideas. So that one there was just I was all I played was a C, uh, C dominant seven. What kind of did I play? I think I played the flat nine, flat nine in there as well, which kind of creates this sound, which again has more tension because this D flat wants to resolve uh, to the the C in the F minor chord. So the secondary dominance are creating great tension and release. So uh, while I'm playing these uh, altered chords, they're called, where we're altering the fifth or the ninth. You can chuck in like sharp five, uh, sharp five, sharp nine. That's a great sounding one. Um, again, and you can just use it in your solo, so like uh, flat nine, uh, sharp nine. Uh, again, just to create a bit more interest, I suppose for you as a player, if you're playing a solo over Valerie, uh, and, and as a listener, it kind of just creates this like, oh, this does not sound nice, this, oh, thank God. It just makes it sound, I suppose, just a bit more interesting, a bit more uh, pleasurable. Um, Whoops, a bit more pleasurable. So um, you can also do exactly the same, finally. I, I did say that before, but I lie, I lie to you. So uh, you can do exactly the same thing for these chords that we said that you can chuck in from the upper extensions. So you could have like a G7, sharp five, which could make the C minor sound um, more of a resolution. You can do exactly the same for like the, uh, well, this is a, a, a Flat, flat nine, which results to the uh, D major seven, if you want to play off that. So hopefully that just gives you some uh, food for thought. Um, we'll be doing a second uh, video as I came up with loads of ideas and I thought I may as well split it over two uh, channels. If you've got any questions, please put it in the comments below. And yeah, I hope that gives you some food for thought. Um, it's been an absolute honor. This is my first video and I'm really excited, yay! We're gonna do loads and we're gonna have 
uh, fun and we're gonna have many adventures. Um, anyways, bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> I thought that was actually all right, that one. What would you say? <laughs>